Welcome to the Kentucky History Channel, where we strive to bring you all the Kentucky history content you want and you deserve. Kentucky is a part of all of us, and we plan on covering all the history we can, from Pike County to Fulton County, from Louisville to Harlan. Here on our YouTube channel, you can find many videos dedicated to different events, people, governors, and places in Kentucky. There's something for everybody. While you're here, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified anytime new Kentucky history is available. And if you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon page as well, or patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. You've probably heard about Daniel Boone, but what about the rest of the frontiersmen who came to Kentucky and settled? That's what we want to bring to the Kentucky History Channel, the stories of the untold, the stories of those forgotten. One thing to expect on our channel is great Kentucky content. Some stories that you've never heard of. The Knight Riders, who began in Western Kentucky. Bloody Monday, the riots in Louisville. The assassination of Governor Goebel, the only governor ever assassinated in the United States. Stories from all over Kentucky, stories that are unforgettable once you've heard them. You can find out who counties in Kentucky are named after and how your county got started. From beginning to end, we plan to document every county in Kentucky, all 120. Reach out to us on all of our social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And also leave a comment on one of our YouTube videos. You can also check out our podcast episodes. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many more. Welcome back to the Kentucky History Podcast. I'm your host, Jameson Cable, and we're going to finish up talking about the Knight Riders with David Kirkpatrick. So the right. Knight Riders, I mean, again, we could talk about the different violence, the different um, aspects that took place to, to we're, to we're blue in the face, but this has a big effect on the whole state. I mean, obviously you're getting the reputation of course of Kentucky kind of being this wild west neighbor shooting neighbor kind of stuff going on. And that's, I mean, that is kind of what is going on. Um, right. There's no, there's no sugar coating it, I guess. Um, but yeah, people start thinking, you know, there, there starts to be more resistance, which you can expect. Yeah. I mean, you are, Taking people's livelihoods uh, in the name of a just cause, you know, we, you know, it's very understandable this to say, "Hey, we're being pressured into doing this." Uh, there's a good outcome right. at the end, but in the other hand, you're still kind of messing pe- messing with people. Too wrong to make right. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. That- as that violence intensifies, and you're no longer just doing tobacco, but you, you mentioned you know the shooting of uh, the grandfather and grandson and the sharecroppers in um, uh, in Western Kentucky. You know that's by that point. By the time that's happening, this is spring of 1908. This starts in 1904, and so you know as as much uh, publicity as things like the Hatfields and the McCoys get, that's a very small area affected. I mean, you know, it goes over a couple of decades, but I mean it. And like you said earlier, we're talking into north central Kentucky, all the way through western Kentucky, down into Tennessee, north of Nashville, for four years. I mean, there are hundreds mm-hmm. of these events. And so, yeah, people begin to get tired of it as it gets more ruthless. Yeah. And, and you know, people begin to take, I guess, sides and they begin to be more vocal. Um, but mm-hmm. there's two, there's basically two camps, you know. You have the newspapers who are who begin to kind of say, you know, these people are terrorizing the place. These people are thugs. They're they're coming in. They're taking you know. They're they're not doing any good. Um, and right. then you got the people who are inside the Night Riders and and the PPA to an extent um, who are silent. You know, you know it's yeah. a very it's a very strict 
code they're taking, you know, you don't talk about it. You don't, um, uh, you know, you, you just don't bring it up at all. If you're a member, you don't talk to nobody else about it. And right. it becomes political as well. You know, if um, I'm a sharecropper or if I'm a, if I'm a PPA member, Hey, you know, I got some votes for you. I'll vote. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll vote you in. But you know, yeah. you gotta, you gotta, you know, play by the line or uh, play, play by our rules. And so then there's that as- aspect of it. Yeah. Go ahead. And they're they're trying in in West Kentucky, like you say, to dominate some of those county offices uh, with people who are completely sympathetic to the cause, so that if you do get arrested or something, you're not going to be prosecuted. Yeah, and, and the, there's a whole there's a whole way that they um, they operate. Like whenever they're not necessarily when they're in a meeting or or anything like that, but what how they communicate each other. How do you know if something is good to talk about or if this right. person's with the order? And um, so the night riders that whenever they were would go to meet or talk, they had a certain certain thing like. You would have to say, um, you know, how are you doing? So, something to that extent. And they would reply, um, I, I'm doing well on on so forth. And then they'd reply on bended knee. And then that was the signal there to say, okay, this person's got, uh, you know, is in the PPA or is in the uh, so the Night Riders. And then they would then be able to trust each other and go, go on. Um, but those kind of things, it, it really became a, issue with stopping them or preventing them because they had politicians in right. their pocket. They had numbers in their pocket. Let's say you went to court for whatever issue and they, the jurors be are all in the PPA. So then yeah. people, the, the people were stuck and you know, the press, the, the newspapers at the time really fought, fought against it and fought back. Um, and you had those just local people, and that's what it, ca- it took. It took local people kind of taking a stand to kind of pre- to kind of break down the uh, the hold that the PPA had. And the one theme, I guess, or the one lesson, I guess, you you kind of uh, you see throughout history is that when people begin to use violence to get their point across or to get their agenda across it never really works out. Um, yeah. It always end up, it always ends up coming back. And like in this situation, right. You know, you had the, you had the tobacco trust as the bad guys, the PPA is the good guys, but then the PPA or the night riders began <sighs> to become violent. And then they're just, they're just as bad as the, the tobacco trust. You know, they're just yes, as bad right. as looked on, you know, they're causing just as much damage, if not more, you know, uh, to say, you know, the the the, the uh, a- ATC that they didn't kill anybody. They weren't out running around, you know, burning people's tobacco down and so forth. So in that sense, they weren't bad, but they were bad as far as the monopoly aspect of it. Um, but the Night Riders were. They were running around, threatening oh, yeah. people, burning down uh, their livelihoods, and even in cases, you know, killing people. Um, yeah. And you're right. You you do get short term gains sometimes from that. You know, violence can be effective for a short period of time, but it always backfires. It, it being ruthless and, and, and not having compassion never benefits your cause. And, uh, you yep. know, they would find that out in the courts. Yep. Yep. And so pretty much, I mean, I don't, there's not no exact time whenever I'm looking through all this and looking at all these different times and dates and so forth. The big thing that I see more than anything is with like the Birmingham shooting uh, with, you know, a a child was killed um, that, um, and then a few other uh, murders, I guess to say like that are happen. Uh, And people start to start to get frustrated. They start to kind of fight back. Um, There is an incident where a person is called to be on a jury uh, against a possible night rider. And that person is threatened. The person is basically run out of town um, and so forth. And then in another case, a person is going to be a, a juror on the night Rider or testify against the night Riders. And that's one of the things, you know, they couldn't get anybody to testify until these kind of more 
violent crimes happen. And right. those those people would, would would then come forward. I will testify. Um, but then their their lives became fearful. I mean, they were yeah. threatened and so forth. Um, there's a case where a guy was going to be um, a uh, juror or a, was going to testify. He was shot. He lived. Um, but then at, at, at another guy who was kind of connected to the uh, guy that was shot ends up at a barbecue and some night riders are there and they end up killing him because he mm. was helping out the one guy's son and it just begins a snowball and oh, yeah. the you know the night riders begin to be, be more uh, or they, they're not as uh, or they begin to be more careless and those things that their, their hold I guess begins to fall apart now I don't think for a while is anybody ever convicted for anything. Um, no, it's and, true. And that, that just goes to show you the, the political end that they had tied up. Um, you know, if you're able to pick your jurors and the judge is in your pocket, <laughs> yeah, nothing's yeah. going to, you know, that's, a, that's about as immunity as you can get. <laughs> well, they even threatened, was it a, a Marshall County judge? You know, mm-hmm. that's threatened but in be- bitten because they're worried that he's not going to defend them. So yeah, even if either if the judge is not paid off, if you can threaten them, you get the same results. So, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, and, and they had numbers. You know, they had people. A lot of people were in in their in their pocket and you know participated. Um, another big case that really kind of. Uh, th- this was probably the, one of the most defining cases, and there's a book. Um, called the Silent Brigade, and it, it it focuses pretty much completely on Mary Howell and or Hallowell, however you want to pronounce it, um, and her incident, which which we talked about brother versus brother before, but this is legitimate brother versus brother, um, right. and it get, it gets it, it's a little murky. You have to find some old court documents or the old uh, newspaper clippings that have all the procedures and all that to kind of get the background. And it, 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 it's one of those times where a night rider slips up. Um, Mary <laughs> Hallowell, her sister-in-law comes and asks for a mask that her son had from a traveling circus or, you know, some, some, something like that, uh, that I guess they had got. And like, you know, she lent it to him. <laughs> no, no big deal. Well, then, one of uh, I think one of the night rider, one of the raids, and maybe Hopkinsville, um, one of those. Um, I can't recall right off which one it was, but they come, they get a little suspicious. Uh, Mary Hallowell and her husband go and uh, just you know talking to his brother and and so forth, and eventually they let it out that they used the he used the mask for the night riders raid. Right. <laughs> At first, they're just like. Don't worry about it. It's all cool. Well, we got it. You know, we're not going to say anything or anything. Well, then Mary Hallowell's or the, the, their um, tobacco bed is scraped, mm-hmm. which is, again, this is a big deal. You just took yes. away our entire livelihood for the coming year. And they retrace the steps and they're able to kind of, they, they kind of say, well, it looks like it's coming from our, his brother's house. So then... Um, a while later, and it might, I might actually have this reversed. It might have actually been the brother's uh, tobacco bed, bed was scraped first, and then the brother retaliated because he thought it was uh, Mary and her husband or, or so forth. Either way, tobacco beds were scraped, <laughs> which is a big no-no. <laughs> right. Um, and then um, they actually come and come to Mary Hallowell's house, shoot up the house, um, with with uh, the, the the their son in the house and everything, um, Mary Hallowell is shot, but it's only it's like buckshot. If that makes any, you know, mm-hmm. if that's I don't, I don't know if it I I wouldn't say it was buckshot then, but you know something similar. So she's not really injured, uh, but they they drag her out, they drag her husband out, uh, they whip them both, and like they threaten to kill her, and like some of the people are like kill her, you know, kill her here, and they're like the son's begging. I mean. Uh, uh, a completely terrible scene, um, right? And and, all, and and you know this is this is the brother, this is the brother and his sister in law, 
and, and that he's doing this to. It's kind of crazy to think about. Uh, they end up going back to the doctor the next day. Mary Halliwell is taken taken care of, and then they go to. Um, they end up there. They end up moving out of the state because it's so bad. Um, right. But at some point, they get sued um, for the the for the tobacco uh, plant uh, scraping, tobacco bed scraping. Uh, and it, they come back and they're like, "This is just crazy," you know. We got sh- we got shot. They shot up our house and so forth and so on. And we're getting sued. So they actually turn around and they sue. They sue them. And after they, they sue for about a hundred thousand dollars or something like that. But after it's all said and done, the judge or the the governor steps in, pardons Mary Halliwell for the uh, tobacco bed scraping part of things. And then um, they end up, her husband ends up winning $35,000 in a settlement. Which is not or, bad. Or, yeah, not, yeah, not bad at all. I guess it wouldn't have been a settlement. It was a verdict, I guess. You know, that was the mm-hmm. final. Like, well, is that a settlement? I, don't, I mean, I'm not a lawyer. Yeah, I'd a say verdict, is, yeah. Settlement yeah, usually out of court. Settlement would be outside of court, yeah. So right. it was a verdict, and that was handed down. Um, and that was probably, probably the biggest in my mind, that's the straw that kind of broke the camel's back, you know. Right. Um, from then on, like, you know, okay, we got a verdict. Somebody is actually had, is, is going to have to pay uh, for them. They they did not go back. They ended up living in Paducah uh, for the rest of their lives. But um, uh, that's kind of, I guess that's the beginning of the end for them. And uh, yeah. from then on, um, they uh, more people start stepping up, more people start, you know, uh, I guess things just start kind of unraveling. But now, besides that, Nobody is still convicted of any sort of problems or any sort of issues. Um, it goes on. I mean, these the, these raids go on until just about 1910, if not a little farther than that. Um, it gets to the point that David Amos is put on trial for the Hopkinsville raid. And to think that happened in... Uh, 1907. It took them three years to be able to gather up enough evidence, I guess, to right. uh, you know, arrest and prosecute and so forth. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> it's just it's just a little baffling, I guess. That that's how that's how long it took. Uh, yes. But um, <laughs> they they put him on trial, and after they put him on trial, uh, it lasts for a little. It, the trial lasts for maybe like a month or something like that. Uh, but he's not he's not convicted. Um, the um, uh, the juries are, are not necessarily a hundred percent, I guess, bought. But uh, they're not. There's not enough evidence. He has an alibi that says that on the night of the Hopkinsville raid, he was at somebody's house doing a, a house call for somebody that was hurt or whatever, and you know. That's it. They they had no other way to disprove that, and most likely that person was probably a night rider too. They yeah. <laughs> and they just said, "Yeah, yeah, he was there. Yeah, my wife right. needed some help or something." <laughs> uh, so I, I think the the uh, prosecution had a witness, but that person refi- didn't end up not testifying. And that 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 was the thing that they had that was a problem. You know, you would get a witness, they would be threatened, they could be killed even um, yeah. after. Um, after I think it was Axiom Cooper that was was murdered, uh, and he was one of the possible witnesses. Uh, that was a, oh, that was another thing with Mary Hallowell. She was to be a witness um, to to testify against him, and that was another reason why they were so um, aggressive towards her. Um, right. But yeah, it was it was a it was kind of a secret society, man. It was interesting. Um, yeah. To, to be you know several thousand strong and to have that sort of security I mean, you know congress has 500 people and, and they leak stuff all the time you, you it's <laughs> impressive that these people are able to keep the secret for that long <laughs> yeah. especially yeah. because you're, you're in an area where people know you and i know you're wearing masks and things but you, you wonder you know did a horse was a horse ever recognized you know someone's yeah. clothing give them away yeah, you know. yeah. So they have um, a lamp maybe or something <laughs> yeah yeah uh, and <coughs> they held it together they did, and it was such a, it was a secret society to an extent. Like you know, they could they did not step out of line. They did not um, 
you know, they just didn't let things slip and they, they kept it within the, the group. And it, I mean, again, you can't necessarily prove that all 100, 200 some raids that happened were all connected to the Knight Riders and so forth. But there was a lot. There was a whole lot. Yes. And to think that for years, nobody was prosecuted. Nobody got into any trouble hardly at all. Um, it, it, it's pretty amazing how, how they were able to do it. Right. Um, and, and the David Amos, like, you know, he, he seems like definitely with hindsight here that he was the one behind everything, um, pulling the strings, but never really was caught, never really was trialed for anything. He ended up dying, I think, in 1915. So like a little bit after the trial ended, like an, it wasn't long, maybe, maybe 1919, but so, you know, within uh, the next 10 years, he actually died. Um, the other big thing that happened was the, um, I think it was in 1911, the court case with the American Tobacco Tr Trust came, came suit and it was deemed a monopoly. And so, yeah. Buck Duke and all that had to it, it had to be broken up, and therefore, it's one of those things. Like when you're looking at it, like who won, who lost. Oddly enough, it almost just kind of worked out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if if that's a possible outcome <laughs> or scenario. Yeah. Well, like you said at the beginning, it's a shame that people had to be spurred to that point because it was a case where it was a just cause. But the ends didn't justify the, the means, you know, the, the tactics they ended up using made them just as bad as Duke. Um, but, you know, whereas it, the, the ultimate thing that saves them is not uh, participating in the Black Patch Wars. It's the courts hand down the verdict. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was really the salvation. Yeah. And, and, you know, you think about all that they did and all they put up, you know, put into it. And basically, it came down to the the courts said, "Okay, this is a, this is a monopoly, bud. You got to break it up." And oddly enough, it worked out in that sense. Um, yeah, I, 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 it, it's it's just quite amazing, I guess, when you really um, think about it how 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 it all unfolded. Which again, you know, we're in hindsight, um, so it's uh, it's interesting. Um, I don't know this for sure, too. Or either, but I feel like, and I've, I've not, I've got to start doing the research on this part of this as well, uh, because this kind of leads into another aspect of, uh, I guess, violence in Kentucky is is the you know KKK. Mm -hmm. You know, this is all it seems it seems like to me, and I, I know this is all speculation on my part. I've not dug in any deeper than what I already know and what I've said, but it seems like. So from 1910 to say 1915, the Night Rider stuff all kind of goes away or fades away because of the verdict and and, and so forth. And right. um, but then the other kind of secret organization kind of begins to creep in a little more. And you know, you know I, I think there's a connection. I think there is. I, I need yeah. to research it more. But um, it, it's all back to that vacuum of power. You're, after the Civil War, these little communities that were so established are destroyed. And so instead of county courts filling that gap, uh, a lot of times it was associations or groups, some good, many not good at all. Uh, yeah, and uh, they would step in and, and, and take control of large uh, parts of public opinion. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and some horrible things happened uh, as a result mm -hmm. of that. Yeah, and... and it just seems like one of those things that, especially looking at all the all the um, Night Rider raids that happened, that some of those could be other other things, a family squabble possibly, yeah. uh, but you know could have been other issues that people were taking um, uh, their own justice, I guess, and you know, vigilante justice. That is a lot of um, a lot of stuff that happens from during this time period, I guess, from, you know, seven, eight, 1870 to 1920 of vigilante justice. You know, I'm not going to wait around for the, uh, the law man to come and settle this. I'm going to settle it on my own. Um, right. You know, you had many cases um, of just crime. You know, somebody committed a murder. Well, we're not going to wait till the courts figure this out. We're going to find out who did it and we're going to go hang them. Yep. And that was, that, that was, I mean, if you want to say Kentucky justice in that sense, that's what they did. 
That's exactly right? what they did. Um, oh, yes. Um, there, there was, you mentioned the governors before, and the governors, I mean, and, and just the sheriffs and all those kind of uh, people became very vilified sometimes because they were just trying to protect the the, the criminal, to say it, uh, uh, long enough to get them a court trial Trump, before the moms yes. break down the door and, <laughs> and take, them out, take them out on their own. Um, uh, just, just, uh, just crazy, crazy time, yeah. I guess, to say the least. So back to the, you know, the topic at hand, the Night Riders. Um, overall, uh, final thoughts. What do you, what do you think? You know, I think it's signaled the end uh, of an era where you know vigilante justice was an option. And you know, my wife was from the West, and you know they had the Range Wars. Uh, you know, not not very many years prior to that. And uh, you, you see that sort of fade there as well, where uh, there's this idea in America that you, you would take these matters into your own hands. And what the people realize is that, you know, it really doesn't work well. Like you said earlier, violence might get you what you want in the short term, but it's never going to play out in the long term. And you've got to seek justice through the courts and that kind of thing. And Kentucky, uh, you know, kind of joins uh, the 20th century at that point um, by returning to those um, you know, county offices and, and judge executives and that sort of thing that had been so in place before uh, and and really putting their faith in those institutions. Yeah, well, and, it, and I like how you, th- you you mentioned it, joining joining the 21st century until uh, we get to Eastern Kentucky and we start getting all the mind issues and, and right. the strikes and all that stuff, which that's a whole nother podcast, a whole nother day. Um but yeah, it, it definitely was a turning point. Um, one of those turning points, you know. I think back about um, uh, the the assassination of Goebel. Uh, Kentucky politics was just so, yeah, I want to say corrupt, you know. Which I mean, uh, yeah. you know, kind of a politician pol- politics and corruption seem to go hand in hand in many many cases. But you know, at the time, it was just so um, one sided to say it in that way as well. And it's like they stared up a whole bunch of mess with the whole governor's election and so forth and got everything was built up to this point. And then Goebel was shot and it kind right. of just the, the balloon deflated. And it's like, oh, you know, everybody kind of stepped back, took a step back. And in this sense, too, you know, everybody got so riled up uh, the tobacco, the, the tobacco farmers, rightfully so uh, their their livelihood was at stake. And then they kind of built everything up to a point and then, you know, people start getting killed, things start getting rough. And then the, the law is passed or, or the verdict comes down that to break up the monopoly. And it's just like everything deflates, you know, right. and, and, uh, you know, to say life goes back to normal as much as it, as much as you could say that, uh, it definitely becomes uh, a big issue. And I mean, obviously a big event cause we're talking about it, 100, 120 years later, um, yeah. but it, it is. It's one of those kind of forgotten too. Like I, I don't think a lot of people realize that it even happened or that that's even something yeah. that took place. Um, you know, outside of a few court uh, 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 courthouse signs, you know, in the yard in, in some of these places yeah. like Hopkinsville, that there's not a lot there to remind Kentuckians, and it's not covered, um, you know, in documentaries and things as much. And I don't know why that is because it was hugely influential for the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big and big, big time, even national, nationally. You know, you think about the right. uh, uh, monopolies and how all that stuff was a big, the whole anti, anti, antitrust act that uh, was it in 1890? Was it in, or 1890s? Is when it passed. I should know that. I, 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 I'm going to say 1896. Yeah. But, you know, it, this was kind of one of those big things. I mean, it broke it up and wasn't as, I mean, maybe national headlines as, you know, these, you know, Kentuckians and Tennesseans are out shooting each other. Maybe not have been as big, uh, but the antitrust stuff was definitely a big thing. Um, and, right. and this is when all that stuff was taking place. Um, it, it, just the national implications, I guess, is 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 um, not. I guess I guess that's probably where it lacks the, you know, civ- you know the Civil War. Everybody knows about the Civil War, <laughs> but you know, yeah. it just doesn't get that attention. Um, which I mean, obviously, it's not as big as the Civil War, but uh, right. 
<laughs> didn't have the staying <laughs> power though because it wasn't a national. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, people are still people are still fine about the Civil War. So that's true. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was it's. It, I think in Hopkinsville, there's a few there's a few signs about the raids and so forth. Da- Dawson's uh, Dawson Springs, um, as well. Um, da- David Amos's house, I guess we mentioned that before, is a mm-hmm. uh, kind of a small museum of, of uh, what took place. And again, you, you just think of, I just think about David Amos and how he. Yeah, you know, was the was the man pretty much behind it all, but never, you know, man. They just had it. They just had their had it going on, man. The, oh yeah. No, uh, no talk. No, no nothing. Um, but anyway, uh, that's about all there is to say about it. I guess um, I don't have any more tangents to go on <laughs> as far as that goes. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, there's a few good books out there to check out um, to, if if you want to. Some of them I know. Um, would very easily be at your library. Um, if you uh, have one of the digital library apps, Hoopla, or um, what? what's some other ones uh, that you can get books on your phone? Uh, there used to be one called... Oh, I'm blanking out now. Don't tell where I work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we use Hoopla a lot now, but uh, Overdrive uh, was mm-hmm. one. Libby is another that people can right. download books onto. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I highly uh, recommend it, especially ebooks. If you you're an ebook reader, uh, download the Hoopla app. All you have to do is have a library um, membership at a affiliated uh, library, which are like Lincoln County, I assume Mercer County, a lot of the ones around here in Kentucky. Um, that's who they're connected through. But it, my point being is, I know that the Silent Brigade, uh, that book is on Hoopla, so you can get it there. Uh, it is a, it is a not an audio book, but it is a, a uh, digital copy so mm. um that one and then there, there's about there's about three or four more um easy to get a library loan and probably find it uh, you know i mean I, you're probably not gonna yeah. find it at uh, barnes and noble or anything like that but amazon or someplace like that and i'll put a link to some of those books or just a list of some of those books in the description a lot, a lot of books out there check them out um or or not and we'll just read them and you can listen to us talk about them again later. Right. <laughs> um, well, anything else before we, before we sign off here? No, I think that's it. You know, it was an era that is fascinating to read about, but I'm glad it has passed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Very, very much so. Um, well, that is all for, for us, uh, for this episode. Um, we will uh, bring some more Kentucky history soon. Um, that's it. Thanks uh, again, David, for coming on. Um, Thank you. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time. Welcome to the Kentucky History Channel, where we strive to bring you all the Kentucky history content you want and you deserve. Kentucky is a part of all of us, and we plan on covering all the history we can, from Pike County to Fulton County, from Louisville to Harlan. Here on our YouTube channel, you can find many videos dedicated to different events, people, governors, and places in Kentucky. There's something for everybody. While you're here, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified anytime new Kentucky history is available. And if you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon page as well, or patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. You've probably heard about Daniel Boone, but what about the rest of the frontiersmen who came to Kentucky and settled? That's what we want to bring to the Kentucky History Channel, the stories of the untold, the stories of those forgotten, One thing to expect on our channel is great Kentucky content. Some stories that you've never heard of. The Knight Riders, who began in Western Kentucky. Bloody Monday, the riots in Louisville. The assassination of Governor Goebel, the only governor ever assassinated in the United States. Stories from all over Kentucky, stories that are unforgettable, 
once you've heard them. You can find out who counties in Kentucky are named after and how your county got started. From beginning to end, we plan to document every county in Kentucky, all 120. Reach out to us on all of our social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And also leave a comment on one of our YouTube videos. You can also check out our podcast episodes. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many more. We're always seeking to find more Kentucky history so we can bring it to you. The viewers, the listeners, we want all the stories and all the events from Kentucky's great history to be told and shared everywhere.